We're gonna cover permissions really quick. Permissions are something you're gonna run into a lot when you're using Linux and running applications. So let's list out the stuff in my home directory for user fideliper. What we'll see is a bunch of output over here and all of this stuff is related to permissions. So what we're seeing here is that these files inside of the home directory for user fideliper are, and this should not be a surprise, owned by user fideliper and group fideliper. So we always have user on the left here and group on the right. So these files are owned by Fidelper and group Fidelper. Let's see what user Fidelper can do on those files. So over here, we have a bunch of stuff. The first dash on the far left here shows you what kind of thing this file or directory is. So if we see a dash with nothing, it's a file, just a regular old file. If you see D, it's a directory. And these can be a few other things like S for a symlink. We don't have any symlinks here, but if we did, we would see an S. And then we see a bunch of R, W, and X and we see three sets of them. So RWX, RWX, RWX. And of course, some of these don't have all three things, R, W, or X, and some do. Okay, so the convention here is as follows. Read, write, and execute, and that's what RWX is. And the reason why this repeats three times is because there are permissions for users, groups, and anything else other. So this SSH directory is a directory, it's D. The user can read, write, and execute the directory.ssh. The group, Fideliper can read, write, or execute the directory SSH, and anyone else, any other user on the system can read the directory and can execute the directory, but it cannot write to it. So it can't delete files and it can't write new files inside of the SSH directory. So it's seemingly simple, but that has a lot of ramifications that aren't very obvious. That's why you see people saying do something like sudo chmod 777 directories to make it quote unquote world writable. So if I did 777 to a certain directory or file, it makes it world writable. So let's just do that to SSH and I'll list this out again. We'll see it's highlighted because uh, Ubuntu likes to show you and make sure that you know it is world writable. And we can see the only thing that really changed here is now that other can write to this SSH directory, which you don't really want. So chmod stands for change and the mod is actually mode and the mode is just the permissions of something. So I hate actually using the numbers, the numbers have a meaning, but it's dumb and not easy to remember. So I like doing the following to change mod, to change the permissions of a file. So we can set user group and other explicitly. So what I'm gonna do here is say, I wanna change the SSH directory. And the way I wanna change the SSH directory is as follows. I want the user to be able to read, write, and execute, comma. I want the group to be able to read and execute, but not write. And I want other to be not to be able to do anything. So I'm going to use the minus sign to subtract the ability to read, write, and execute. Great. So now we can see we've affected this. User can read, write, and execute. Group can read and execute. Other cannot do anything there. It cannot read, nor write, nor execute to the SSH directory. So we have a few options here with chmod. We can do user, group, and other. We can even combine things like user and group can do the following, but other cannot. So it's really useful to do a bunch of other combinations. And you see I have the equal sign, the minus sign, and the plus sign. So I actually could say chmod other add the write permission. So right now other cannot write, but we're gonna add the write permission to the SSH directory, and then we can see it can. And I'll just reset that real quick. I'm gonna say other minus w to take away that write permission, and we'll see it's gone again. Okay, so we can use the chmod command to affect permissions. So a file will have a user and a group, and then we can say the user can do the following, the group that is assigned can do the following, and anyone else has the following permissions as set here. One thing I wanna clarify is the execute permission. So if a file has the execute permission, it means it can be executed as a command. So just like we run sudo or vim or htop, anything like that, that's a command. Those commands are all executable files that live somewhere. So if I list out the user bin directory, we'll see they're all mostly red. And what red denotes in uh, Ubuntu is that they all has execute permissions for everyone. Now, a directory with execute permissions just means that you can CD into it. So I can CD into .ssh. So I'm user fideliper, users of this file, of the directory ssh can read, write, and execute, so I can execute into the directory, which means I can CD into it. But let's take that away. Let's say chmod, let's say the user for the directory SSH cannot execute a directory. So user minus X, the directory SSH. So directory SSH, the user cannot execute, and I try to, log, and I try to CD into it. I can't, I don't have permission. So to bring that back, we'll just do U plus X. So I 
add the execute permission back to user developer, and then I can get into that SSH. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the var directory, I'm gonna do sudo make dir sum directory, and we'll see that that file exists now, sum directory. Now I use sudo, so that file becomes owned as user root, because when you run commands with sudo, you basically become user root. So I ran the make dir command, which makes a directory, to create the sum dir directory, and because I was running as user root in that case, it made it as user and group root automatically. So we have some dir, and we have some default permissions here for any directory. So user can always redirect and execute, and then we have group and other can read and execute. So anyone can CD into these directories and read what's in them, but they can't edit the files in them. Only user root can do that. So I'm user fidelper. I can CD into some dir. I can list it out, but I can't make a new file. So if I do touch here and some file name, it's just gonna try to create a file name, some file name with nothing written to it, an empty file but permission denied because I can't write it. So if I'm user fidelper and I wanna add a new file into a directory owned as root, which says other cannot write into it, then how do we do it? So any command I run as user fidelper will get owned and run as user fidelper. So I'm gonna run the touch command as user fidelper and I'm gonna try to make some file. Like we saw, it doesn't work. So let's do chmod other plus write and we'll do that to the current directory, which is sumdir. So dot is just the current directory, so I'm saying do the current directory named sumdir. Operation not permitted, because I'm not owning the file and I can't affect it, so I have to use sudo to change that. So now I should be able to do touch some file, and some file now exists, because for the current directory, which is the directory sumdir, other, anyone who's not user root nor group root, now has permission to write in this directory. And I can do minus there to take that away again. I'll back out a line, list it out, and we can see that the directory sumdir is no longer able to be written to by other. It can't even be written by group root. So let's say I do sudo usermod ag again, and for user fidelifer, I'm gonna add them to group root. So if I do groups fidelifer, we'll see that user fidelifer is part of group fidelifer, part of group admin, and now also part of group root. So. I'm gonna to touch a file in sumdir, I'm gonna do a new file, and I still don't have permission to because both group and other don't have permission to write into the sumdir directory. So let's do sudo chmod group plus write sum directory. List it out, and we'll see now group root can. So fidelifer is part of group root now, right? We just saw that, groups fidelifer, I'm part of group root, the user fidelifer is. So if I do touch sumdir, yet another file, that should work, but it didn't. We got permission denied. So I'm actually gonna exit and then log back in and we'll head to the var directory and I'll just clear this out. And I'm going to try to run this command again. Touch sumdir yet another file and I'll spell it right this time. And this time I successfully wrote to that. So I had to log out and log back in for that change for me to be added to group root to take effect. So just know that you might need to do that as well. So see you did some dir, list it out, and we see I have yet another file there. It's owned by user and group root because that's who I ran that command as. And I was able to create that file because some dir has group write permissions here. And like I showed you, the user fit helper is part of group root. So let's just review some commands one more time. We do chmod and we do dash capital R to make it recursive if we want. And I can do things like anything in the .ssh directory has certain permissions, like group will add a read, write, and execute permissions to the SSH directory and anything inside of it because I did the dash capital R flag. Now I can also do things like change the owner of a file. So if I wanted to change the owner of the .config directory, I could. So what I'll do there is chone and let's just say root config. It's not going to let me, so we have to use sudo for that. So sudo chone, I want user root and the .config directory. It asked for my password, and it did it. So now the .config directory is owned by user root, and then I can change that back. So I'll do sudo again, chone root config. Oops, I had to change it back. I didn't do that. So I needed to change it back to user fidelifer, just like that. And then you can do change group as well to change a group. So let's say I want to change the group to group admin and I want that to be in the .config file and that worked. So .config is owned by group admin now and I can change that back to fidelifer with the same command. So we have chmod to change the mode, which is the permissions. We have chown to change the owner and change group, chgroup, to change the group of a file or a directory. 
So we'll see how permissions behave when we get into a web application using PHP in a little bit as well to kind of dig in and solidify the concepts here.